Okay, so for this section, we're now working on chapters. Uh, <laughs> forgotten already. Um, we're working on a granny square, which is chapter four. And we're going to be looking at how to create our granny square. So the first section is is the foundation to our granny square. So once you get this underway, you should be able to keep making granny squares constantly. So I have now changed my wall to a DK wall and I have a size four hook. And this way we'll be working on the same um, hook. What on earth have I got all over my hand? <laughs> um, together. So first of all, we're going to make, make sure that we've got our wall in our hands and it's nice and firm. And then we're going to make sure we've got enough tail to be woven in, which is what we've done in all the previous videos going to wrap it around our finger, take a hook around and create our slip stitch. Take off your finger, pull it a little bit. So we're going to create six chains. Now the reason why I say six chains, and it may differ from other people that um, have made patterns for the granny square, they will say four because you're a beginner and at the moment we work in hand-eye coordination and locating spaces it's much easier for you to maneuver through a six chain circle than it is a four now as you get more experienced i would suggest going down to a four and um, this will make your granny squares a lot neater and a much better finish but for now it, for the purpose of learning and teaching i'm going to suggest just do a six you can do magic circle but obviously that gets a little bit more comprehensive one two three four five six let's move over to here then you take your your hook and you take it through the first chain so that v you go for the first v and you should have a little bit of a u on your crochet hook like so pick up your yarn and pull all the way through creating a slip stitch now you have a circle and again, you can see that I'm constantly anchoring to make sure that that doesn't open up too much. You can see that I'm never touching the loop. I'm just, it's more about guiding my um, my hand to where I'm going to be working. The same with embroidery. You, you put your finger behind it so that you, you kind of, your brain kind of knows that it's there. Now, my hands are yellow and I've just realised as I've come to this video, it's because I've just made a lemon concoction downstairs and the lemons have dyed my fingers. <laughs> I've never had that happen before. I've never noticed. But in this situation, they have. So, one. So the next thing is to start our starting chain, which is three chains. And what you should have on your hook is what looks like either a tennis racket. Excuse my, I'm going to put it do that because I don't want to look at my hands. Um, a tennis racket or a little paddle. But you've got a circle and you've got a chain working from it. So I'm going to stop the video here. That is your foundation. So it's a chain six. And then a chain three up after you've slip stitched it together. So chain six, slip stitch together, and then a chain three. 